Welcome to the FCICA product promotional webinar series. We are pleased to have Paul Eanes and David Altman from Metro Floor with us today. Welcome, gentlemen. Paul, Good morning. I believe Good morning. <laughs> there you are. Paul, I believe we're going to start the session with you. That's correct, Kelly, and uh, thanks for having us uh, today. Uh, I am Paul Eanes. I'm head of sales for uh, Metro Floor. Uh, I have been around in the industry. I'm almost embarrassed to say for 40 years, and I was checking with my partner in crime, David Altman, who's head of R&D for us. He's been in the industry also for 40 years, so uh, 80 years total. I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, so I guess we're about to, to, to find out uh, here. But we, uh, we're pleased and honored to be a part of the FCICA webinar series and to have a relationship with everybody uh, on this call. Uh, we thank you, audience, for being on here as well, and uh, we thank you for joining, and we promise this to be a productive use of time you know, for, 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 for everyone. Uh, what we want to do today is just give you a little bit of an overview of who uh, Metro Floria is in particular, who was affected by Metro Floria, which is our commercial brand offering, and focus, uh, and this will be Dave's part more so than mine, on floating or rigid floor uh, commercial installation and usage. Uh, we all know about the residential part of it, but uh, going into commercial is sort of like going into a foreign country. Uh, you have to watch out for the landmines out there, so to speak, and we're going to try to cut through the chase on that a little bit later. But I'm going to give you a little bit of background on Metro Floor and our commercial product line before I turn it over to Dave here in about 15 uh, or 20 minutes. Uh, but, Kelly, if you could go to the next slide, please. Uh, a little bit about uh, Metro Floor. Uh, we have been around for over 100 years. Some of you have heard of us primarily through uh, our product a line called Connecto, which was around mainly for multifamily. It's been around about 10 years. Connecto probably has as big a brand name or more than uh, Metro Floor has. Uh, but in any event, I'll talk about our Specta commercial line in just a minute. But a background on us, uh, probably some information that none of you know on here, we are a privately held company based in Norwalk, Connecticut, although our uh, flooring operations are in Calhoun, Georgia, where Dave and I are this morning. We started as Top Tile, they're a group of retail stores in upstate New York by the Stone family, who are our owners, way back in 1912. Now, Norman Stone, who's still going strong at 85 years young uh, back in Norwalk, Connecticut, is credited with inventing peel and stick tile way back in the late 1960s. Uh, and that morphed into LVT, luxury vinyl tile as we know it today, when he first took his idea to a colleague in Japan. He went, took the, uh, his idea to a colleague in Japan to manufacture it there, and the guy that, who was his colleague said, you know, I'll manufacture it, but it won't be here. It's too expensive. He said, I'll make it uh, in Taiwan. So the initial LVT was made in Taiwan, and then quickly, as you all know, moved to China. But there, today there are four um, LVTs, major producers, in China, and they came out of this first factory in Taiwan. And they're today recognized as the best producers in China. So sort of an interesting story there. I will also point out that, frankly, not all Chinese LVT factories are created equal. But Metro Floor has ownership in the best, and they only produce our products for us, as we have no U.S. production per se. Um, if we could go on to the next slide, uh, please, Kelly. Um, and before I jump into our product line per se, uh, I would just like to point out that we are uh, the largest supplier of LVT to Home Depot. Uh, and we have won Vendor of the Year numerous uh, times, separate and distinct, of course, from anything on the Metro Floor side. Our total volume includes, obviously, our Home Depot business and 10 more North American Metro Floor distributors. Everything we do is through wholesale. Plus, we have a vibrant international business placing us in 43 uh, countries. Uh, in 2014, we launched our premium LVT line called Aspecta by Metrofloor, which you see on the current slide. And it's the fastest growing commercial premium LVT line in the industry. 
And why is that? It's because we have the most complete LVT offering of of in, anyone. Um, we have the 28 mil uh, dryback uh, product called Aspecta 5, uh, 3.2 uh, gauge. Um, we have 109 SKUs in that, all in stock here in Calhoun, Georgia, where Dave and I are. And we have a VE line in the dryback line or glue down uh, called Aspecta 1. Um, it's a 22 mil wear layer, uh, not quite as thick as it's a 2.5 gauge. And to you guys, contractors in the audience, it's about 50 cents a square foot less. So obviously a VE glue down line. And again, we stock that here in Calhoun as well. And again, kind of the featured product today that we're going to spend a lot of time on is a Specta 10. That is a floating or our version of a, a premium rigid core product. We refer to our technology as ISOCORE, which is patent pending. Uh, in any rate, in any rate uh, that's what we're going to spend a lot of time talking about uh, today. We have a lot of SKUs in that that we stock here in, uh, in, in Calhoun. Uh, next slide, please, Kelly. The next slide is a, a cross-section of uh, Aspecta 10 and, uh, and the main topic that we will talk about uh, today. It's a beautiful line. I'm showing you a cross-section right now. We'll talk more about the individual SKUs in a minute. But we have 34 SKUs in the Aspecta 10 floating or rigid core line. We have 24 jumbo 9x60 planks, and we even have some 9x72, which you won't see anything any larger than that. Uh, all in a 10.0 millimeter uh, gauge uh, platform. So it is a Sherman tank. Um, it's manufactured by the hot press method as a sidebar, a little bit on manufacturing, uh, which means we have a deeper emboss making our planks look more authentic than continuous lamination. Continuous amula lamination is how U.S. plants make their LVT. I'm not aware of, of many uh, or any hot presses out there in, in the U.S. Uh, now, this cross-section piece that you're looking at, which where we use the hot press technology, is actually cooked for up to an hour at like 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we have like a 2,000-pound press, and you know that from those of you who've been in the ceramic uh, industry, that actually compresses it and gives it that deep emboss and a solid, uh, incredibly tough construction. Uh, also, we have much... Uh, lower minimums uh, because of hot press neck technology as opposed to continuous lamination, uh, which may require up to 20 to 30,000 square feet for special color, et cetera. So there's a lot of advantages to having, frankly, Asian production and using hot press technology. In the product line per se in the Specta 10, we also have, I mentioned the 24 jumbo planks, we also have 10 18 by 36 jumbo tiles. They have the exact appearance of a porcelain tile, but as you might expect, because it's vinyl, uh, much lighter in weight and much more practical in terms of installation. Um, our Aspecta 10 floating floor is made of 100% virgin vinyl and contains no phthalates. Phthalates is a word that basically Dave and I had to look up a few years ago because nobody ever talked about that. But now the whole industry is focused on what? Healthy and safe floors. And frankly, phthalates is an ugly word from a sustainability perspective, and our product contains none of them whatsoever. With a 28 mil wear layer on the Aspecta 10, it carries a 25-year non-prorated wear warranty. I believe, unless something happened yesterday, that's the best wear warranty of any LVT in the industry. It also has a 10-year labor warranty for you guys in the unlikely event we ever have an issue out in, in, in the marketplace. And on this wonderful product, and I, I'm not going to go through all the different layers here. You can read those for yourselves. But you can see the attached mitigating, sound mitigating underlayment there. It's an attached pad. It is 100% synthetic, and that has a number of great things uh, for this uh, particular product. And it basically makes the product uh, nearly soundproof. So if we could go to the next slide, please. Uh, again, I want to point out on the Aspecta 10, um, we refer to our technology as ISOCORE. Uh, this is not a WPC. When everybody talks about this category, it seems like 
uh, they kind of have a one-track mind, and rightfully so. It's all we've heard for the last couple of years, right, Dave? Um, and the WPC is generally referred to as a waterproof core. Our ISO core, again, because of the way I just described it, is quite a bit different. It's lightweight, but uh, it is rigid. Uh, it's a rigid extruded PVC cellular foam core, again, with that attached pad, meaning great underfoot comfort. It's also structurally impervious to moisture and has no natural materials such as cork, wood, or dust, which may, may be fuel for mold growth. Now, there are many competitors that have a cork backing or similar natural products out there, and this product is so new out there, I think we have to be very, very careful here when you get into latent moisture conditions out there. There may be issues down the road. You won't have any of that with respect to 10 because we have all uh, synthetic products in the manufacturer. Uh, again, I referenced the sound mitigating uh, attached pad, um, and look at the scores we get in SDC and IIC of 60 and 69. I know many of you guys have been in the industry as long, or perhaps as long as Dave and I, and we get a million questions every week about SDC and IIC, and if you don't have good scores, you're just not going to get the project, and, and local codes vary all over the place, so if you don't have some strong scores, and ours are indeed legitimate, you're just not going to be involved in the project. Also with the Aspecta 10, it can be installed in open areas up to 100 by 100, uh, which is pretty darn good for a floating floor uh, without the use of T-moldings, I might add. Uh, versatile installations, uh, Dave and I were just conversing on this prior to the call. We think uh, our ISOCore products can go in more places than, they, than, than not commercially. Uh, when we first started, I guess we're very conservative glue down guys. We come from, uh, frankly, an Amtigo background where we spent many years, and all they did was glue down, and we're very conservative when it comes to installation. But we know that with what we've made here with respect to 10, that you can put this uh, in, in a lot of places. You can put it in hotel bathrooms, main lobby entrances, uh, excuse me, entrances over most existing substrates. Uh, and uh, a great thing that we have in the Aspecta 10 too, we actually have all the available trims that you need uh, to put in a successful commercial installation. It's actually foils that are the same color uh, as the field tile, uh, which is fantastic. It's not coordinating trims. These actually match. And we have those all in stock here in Calhoun. We have reducers, T-molding, stair nose, and end moldings. And I think the... Uh, Cherry on the cake is the next thing is we actually have the product treated with ultra fresh treatment, which is a, uh, an odor uh, and it inhibits the growth of odor and stain causing mold and mildew. Uh, there's almost no products out there that have such a treatment and we have it uh, both on the top of the wear layer and on the bottom of the attached pad. So ladies and gentlemen, we got a Sherman tank product that's a great performer, beautiful and healthy and safe. So next slide, please, uh, Kelly. Okay. Uh, in in terms of uh, the brochure and such, uh, we have those available via download that uh, Kelly referenced when we first started this. Um, we can actually go through like 30-some pages here, but we won't bore you with that. But we do ask you to look at all the different uh, insta I mean, uh, room scenes that we have of all SKUs and Aspecta 10 outside of this particular um, seminar. So next slide, please. Great. Uh, now we want to go back to the Aspecta 5, uh, a little bit of commercial, again, on glue down products before we talk more in depth about installation of Aspecta 10. I do urge you, if you can uh, have a situation where you already have the job uh, and you're looking to VE a job and it's a premium LVT, take a look at our Spectre 5. Again, it's 28 mil wear layer, 3.2 gauge. Uh, it's at a fantastic uh, price point. Uh, it's also attained the highest LVT award possible, the NSF uh, 332. Um, can we go back to that next slide? I'm sorry, I jumped the gun here, Kelly. Apologize. Go back to the previous slide. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> uh, the NSF 332 Platinum status, uh, 
you may know, be familiar with the NSF. I think it's 142 for um, carpet or soft surface. This is the resilient equivalent of that. Platinum is the highest rating you can get. We've had this rating for three years. And you know what's amazing about this? Nobody else, even during that time frame, has achieved that status. Uh, there are other people that have the gold or silver standard. Nobody has NSF 332 but a Spectre 5, which tells you what a great product this is. Why is that? Why were we able to achieve that? Well, it's through safe manufacturing, efficient uh, plant production, um, and also the fact of the product components. We have 100% virgin vinyl. As I told you earlier, we had no phthalates. We have a ceramic bead finish. And that finish, by the way, even helps mitigate, mitigate scratching, which is the worst problem of vinyl on the market. Again, like the Aspecta 10, the Aspecta 5 glue down has a 25-year non-prorated wear warranty and a 10-year uh, labor warranty. And we have almost 200 SKUs in stock of this product, or 2 million square feet here in Calhoun. Next slide, please, Kelly. Thank you. Uh, I put together uh, a little uh, sheet called the Aspective 5 Advantage, again, our glue down product, and uh, we compare it with uh, uh, the other premium products out there, all of which are wonderful products, and all of you have used some of uh, these products at one time or, or another. This is just to show that we stack up very favorably against all of them. I will, I'm certainly not going to go through this entire uh, sheet here, but I will point out a couple of things. Um, again, the 3.2 gauge, uh, the only other gauge out there that's a 3.2 in, in this category of product is Armstrong, wonderful product, of course, but great when you're going up against a VCT or other, you know, kind of higher uh, surfaces out there. 28 mil is certainly a, a high enough wear layer. Um, the, the wear warranty, again, you see we have the best wear warranty of anybody there, and I think the best really uh, labor warranty that doesn't have kind of legalese in there and kind of some maybe some Kentucky windage there. Uh, a couple things that we'll point out, we perform extremely well on the Tabor abrasion test. That's why we're able to give you the 25-year wear warranty. And look at the static load of at least 1,000, and you can compare it with other manufacturers on there. And you can see the NSF 332 uh, uh, rating there that we got. And cost, we don't provide pricing on these seminars, but believe me, we are value priced and competitive with anyone. So next slide, please, Kelly. Uh, the good news here on the Aspecta 5 series, we have no shortage of folders or brochures. We have about 2,000 in stock right now um, that we can ship out to anyone who needs any, any, any uh, library for any, any firm. Uh, the Aspecta 5 is a trilogy of products. As you can see, three folders. It may be hard to read, but uh, at the top, you can see to the left, we have a group of woods. It's 54 woods. We have a group of stones or tiles, of which we have roughly uh, 34. And then the balance of the 109 SKUs is in abstracts that you can see all right there. Again, we have as many of those as you need. And when we have the Aspecta 5 catalog to the right uh, that you can also get. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I referenced earlier we also have a VE version of the Aspecta 5 glue down called Aspecta 1. This is uh, only a 22 mil wear layer uh, as opposed to the 28 mil Aspecta 5. It also has a thinner gauge of 2.5 as opposed to a 3.2. Uh, it has 46 SKUs as opposed to 109. So we don't have quite the color range, but it's a beautiful uh, line. Uh, we have a, a lot more square edge products in there, which are perfect for healthcare and assisted living. And we have some really nice bright accent colors in there in 24 by 24 tiles called Midtown. And we put those in corporate education, et cetera. And I can't wait for you to go and look at the catalog on this. It is a beautiful, beautiful line. Uh, next slide, please, Kelly. Uh, this shows just some of the pattern floors that we have within the Aspecta 1 offering. Uh, we have six stunning visuals in here in pattern floors, uh, and we have 4 by 24 planks that they all come in, from herringbone to checker blocks to, to wicket uh, designs. 
And again, we all stock those. And we showed this back at Neocon, and a lot of the design community really flipped out over this uh, this uh, particular uh, offering. Um, and uh, next slide, please. Great. And uh, again, we have a separate brochure for the Aspecta One, which you can download. It shows the full product line uh, uh, there. And um, this is a wonderful commercial offering. Uh, I hope you've, uh, just to reiterate, we talked about the Aspecta 10 floating floor rigid core product. We talked about the Aspecta 5 premium glue down and the VE version called Aspecta 1. We'd love to work with you guys on any projects. But now, uh, without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Dave Altman, our head of R&D, and he's going to focus on our primary product today, our uh, rigid core floor called uh, Aspecta uh, 10. So, Dave? Thank you, Paul. Well, good morning, everyone. I want to take a moment to thank uh, all of you for your time. Uh, taking your time out of your busy schedule to attend this webinar. I also want to thank Kelly and the FCICA for providing us the opportunity to speak uh, to you today. Again, my name is Dave Altman, and just a quick little background about myself. You know, Paul did have to say that we were in the industry for about 40 years, so uh, yeah, it kind of gives you an idea. Um, you know, how old we are. We've been around a while. Parker. I don't think we'll be around another 40 <laughs> years, but uh, hopefully we'll be alive in 40 there years. You go. Uh, uh, that might be a feat as well. But anyway, again, my name is Dave Altman, and I am the Director of uh, Research and Development at Metrofloor, and I'm also responsible for the Technical Services uh, Department. And I've been with Metrofloor a little over four years. Uh, I've been in industry about 40 years, and I'm a former owner of a full-service commercial flooring contractor business. Now, I sold that business back in 93 and entered the corporate world and since I've worked for several different manufacturers in different capacities. Uh, as Paul mentioned, uh, I'll be providing an overview of Inspector Rigid uh, uh, 10 Rigid Core, which is a commercial floating system. Now, some of you may recall that uh, when Pergo launched, or Perstar Flooring, aka Pergo, launched the first floating, actually they weren't the first floating system to market, there were a couple of other hardwood floating systems such as uh, Harris Tarkat, Bowen, uh, yeah, somewhere around 1990. But 1993, Harris Tarp launched their laminate floating system. Well, I was the first uh, employee of that organization, spent a lot of time in Europe, uh, learned a lot about floating systems, uh, and <clears throat> spent about seven years there. And in 1997, we developed a commercial specific product and entered into the commercial market. Most of you, or maybe none of you even know anything about that product. It was a kind of a small um, startup business. It was an absolutely bulletproof product uh, in terms of wear performance, what have you. We had a small network of commercial flooring contractors that were handling those accounts. And some of those accounts consisted of Tommy Hilfiger, Jamboree, Fossil Stores, Build-A-Bear, and so on. So it was, we were really focused on the retail market where we had develop a lot of expertise. And that's why I mentioned this to you, uh, is that we do have a lot of expertise in terms of floating floor systems. systems. Metrofloor produces a lot of different LBT floating systems. So we have a lot of residential experience, but we also have a, a depth of uh, commercial experience. Now, there haven't been too many companies that I'm aware of that have been successful with floating floors in the commercial world. And a lot of that has to do with they don't have the right product, or they don't have the knowledge of, of the commercial industry. And we all know that that is a lot different than the residential world. And the different market segments are, are, are different as well. So I just wanted to mention that uh, before we get started here. Um, if you guys should have any questions, whether you're an architect, whether you're a floor installer, or a flooring contractor, or what have you, uh, we're available to assist you in any way we can, and please uh, don't hesitate to contact us you know, after this webinar or any time in the future. We're here to help you. This is one segment that we're finding is growing really big for Metrofloor, our Aspecta, our Aspecta 10 product. It's, it's incredible the, the amount of material that we're specifying out into the marketplace right now. So let's, the biggest question we get is, uh, where can I use it or where can't I use it? Let's go to the next slide, Kelly. So I don't know if you can see this 
this slide or not. Um, hopefully you can. It's a rel relatively small font size. But so a recommended use document, um, there's always going to be a little bit of gray area. Um, but this is a document that just kind of gives you a, a little bit of a template to work with. Uh, every manufacturer puts these out. Uh, it's a really good reference sheet. Um, what I want to point out here is that what we have done is we've listed our Aspecta 1, Aspecta 5, and Aspecta 10 in this document side by side so that you can see where they're recommended, not recommended, or highly recommended. And on this document, I believe I counted a little over 100, maybe 110 usage areas, and they're broken out into different market segments, as you can see. I think maybe there's eight or 10, healthcare, corporate, um, assisted living, retail, hospitality, et cetera, et cetera. So there's about, out of those 100, roughly 110 uh, usage areas, there are about 90 usage areas where we recommend uh, dryback products. You know, the old staple dryback, you can put it most anywhere. There are some areas that you don't want to put an LVT product in, but for all intents and purposes, there's a lot of, lot of uh, areas in which you can do use a glue down um, product. What I found really interesting was of those, um, of those 90 areas in which we recommend dryback products, when we started going through this, there's only about 10 or 11, uh, if I counted correctly, areas in which Isocor should not be specified or installed in. So let's take a look at the next slide here, Kelly. So I'm sorry, go back one. I got ahead of myself. So of these, uh, these usage areas, uh, where would you or where wouldn't you not use uh, a floating system? Uh, in, obviously, um, let me grab my note. Hospitals, there's going to be some areas that are going to be restricted, certain usage areas due to infectious control. Obviously, in a surgery room, you know, this type of a product wouldn't be utilized there. It has to be bonded, has to be flash coat, heat welded, et cetera. So that would be certain areas within a hospital. Now, obviously, it could go into a gift shop and, and, and other areas within that, that building or that facility. Um, stairs, landings, there may be some code issues that would prevent using a floating system in those types of applications. Maybe a challenge of fixing the stair nosings to different types of steps or stairs. It could, there's so many different out, types of stairs out there in a commercial world, you got concrete steps, forward pan, et cetera, et cetera. So we don't recommend using this product in, in those, uh, those areas. There are better solutions in the market, such as stair treads, et cetera. Really abusive areas, such as airports, bus terminals, railway stations, you know, nightclubs, where you have a lot of dancing going on on the floor. I can remember years ago, there was a it was a restaurant chain, I think it was called Cattleman's, back in the late 70s, early 80s, I believe. I think it was late 70s. And they were expanding across the U.S. And they put a dance floor in their restaurant, which was really kind of cool. And they were using stainless steel. And we had installed a lot of stainless steel dance floors around the country. And if you went in the next morning after the first night uh, that they opened for business and looked at it in the light, they were totally destroyed, stainless steel. So... You know, a little bit of common sense here as to where we should put these products, where we shouldn't put these products. Uh, in addition, when you start getting in these really large areas, you end up having to put T moldings in. It can become a little bit of a potentially a trip hazard, um, rolling loads. Then you've got poor maintenance practices in those types of environments. So we just don't recommend them for those types of usage areas. And again, um, non acclimatized spaces, travel trailers, boats, yachts, things of that nature. Just not an appropriate product to use in, in those type of applications. But there are many, many areas, and we have a tremendous business right now in hospitality, you know, hotels. And we've got, uh, I don't know, Paul, we've got a lot of different uh, hotel chains. Yeah, I don't mind referencing a few of them. We've done hundreds and hundreds of rooms for uh, Hyatt, uh, Best Western, God knows how many Holiday Inns, and even some Marriott uh, properties. Uh, as we all know, LVT has become the product of choice in rooms, and uh, they're getting rid of carpet in droves. And, of course, the first thing they want to do is run the same products right from the room right into the hotel bathrooms, and we do that with success all the time. Yeah. Very good. Okay, let's go to the next slide. 
Uh, so what are some of the key installation uh, considerations or requirements for, you know, a floating system, in particular, a spec to 10? And then I'll go through this quickly, and then I'll talk a little bit more about it when we get to the next slide here. Um, subfloor flatness is, uh, is really important with floating systems. Uh, the standard uh, or the requirement is 3 sixteenths of an inch and a 10-foot radius, and, and we don't want any abrupt height differences as well. So it's an eighth of an inch and a six-foot slope. Um, for example, if you're installing a floor, you can go over a lot of, uh, a lot of different imperfections, but subfloor flatness is critical so you don't create a trampoline effect. If you're going over an expansion joint, generally you don't, need to, you don't have to fill it, but if you have a height difference from one side to the other, it, the higher side should be ground down so that you have a nice, uh, even, flat surface without any abrupt uh, height variation. Could, could potentially cause planks to disengage or to break or, or what have you. A vapor barrier isn't required. If somebody wants to put a, a vapor barrier down over a concrete slab, it won't hurt anything, but it's not required. Uh, additional underlayments are not required. It does come with an attached uh, pad. Uh, does need to be re acclimated like all flooring products should be, whether it's carpet, hardwood, vinyl, whatever. Uh, in regards to the transition profiles, you can go up to 100 feet by 100 feet either direction before a transition profile is required in an open area. Uh, doorways, thresholds, things of that nature, they are required to break them off in, in those locations. Um, you can install over a lot of different substrates or existing floors, such as ceramic tile. We do recommend filling in the grout joints, especially if you have a, a pillow-shaped type of a, a, a ceramic a floor uh, to prevent you know that vertical that vertical movement which could cause some issues with with any quick system we do not recommend do not require it to be glued down it is designed to be a floating system and it's designed for commercial environments can go over radiant heat you don't see radiant heat that often in the u.s um, in commercial environments however it, there is a possibility uh, offices things of that nature and the only thing that uh, we require there is that the substrate, the surface temperature of the substrate should not exceed 85 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't recommend it to be installed in non-climate controlled environments, three season rooms, things of that nature. And in terms of expansion space, you do require an expansion space just like you do any other floating system around the perimeter walls heavy fixed objects, pipes, cabinetry, things of that nature. And the expansion space is three-eighths of an inch. And I'll come back to that again in a minute uh, when we get to, actually when we get to the transition profile slide. And the optimal interior environmental conditions during the installation is 65 degrees to 85 degrees. Now, the product is, it's not a wood-based carrier, so we're not worried about hygroscopic uh, uh, issues. Or the core isn't affected by moisture or high humidity, but it is thermodynamic. It's a polymer, so it is thermodynamic. So it's temperature, not moisture, that will cause the product to expand or contract. Now, there's quite a wide, wide range in terms of uh, temperature that it will withstand before we really see any, any movement. But the reason that we really put this 65 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit during uh, installation is you don't want to be bringing material in from outside, sitting in a container, metal container, on a block top uh, uh, parking lot into a building that's air conditioned, and you know, if it's if it's 95 degrees out and it's in a container, it's going to be 120 in the container. It's going to be condensation, basically raining inside that container. You bring it into a, a building that's air conditioned, and you try to install it. First of all, when it's hot, it's going to be very very flimsy. And it's a rigid core, but if it's that hot, it's going to be it's going to be a little bit softer. And vice versa, if it's in a if it's been frozen, really cold, you bring it into a room, you try to put it together. There's a potential that you could damage the material as you're putting it together. So that's the main reason we like to have the product in the environment, have it acclimated 40 uh, 48 hours in advance, and the product goes together extremely easy. It is a drop lock, what we call drop lock 100. So on the long side, you have the tongue, and the, uh, the short side, it just drops. So you insert the long side on an angle, and it just drops straight down uh, on the neighboring, uh, neighboring planks uh, and joints.
very simple, very fast installation. So let's go to the next slide. And what I've learned over the years, and especially years ago when we were doing the floating systems in all of these commercial applications, and we did hundreds and hundreds of them around the country, and actually we did thousands of them around the world, I should say. I've been all over the U.S., I've been all over Europe, uh, Scandinavia, on big, big, large commercial applications with commercial rated floating systems. And um, it's pretty much the same thing that you run into for residential in terms of, but it's on a bigger scale. And the things that we really have to take into consideration from an application standpoint is, and there's a few things that I've listed here, not only, not only just the, uh, the acclimation, obviously that's important, but the subfloor flatness. The product will go over imperfections in the subfloor. You can have little chips, cracks. You know, you can probably have a pipe in, you know, an inch, inch and a half in diameter where they've renovated a building, they pulled the pipes through the floor. Typically, don't even have to fill those in or, or, or what have you. It'll bridge those types of things. But the floor needs to be flat yeah, without any abrupt height differences. If, and this is one of the issues that we really ran into, probably one of the biggest, one of the biggest challenges that we had in the commercial world is you're not, it's very difficult to change the world of construction. So there has to be good communication between the architect, the general contractor, and the flooring contractor, as well as the end user. You know, quite often we'd, brought, we'd go into job sites and we would have substrates, you know, they're two inches out of flatness. You, know, you, uh, you run a, a string line or you, you shoot a um, um, laser line and that floor has got hills and valleys, you know, the size of uh, Mount Everest. It just doesn't work. Even though it's a rigid floor, there's gonna, it's going to, uh, you'll get a trampoline effect. So. Uh, that's the one thing that you really need to keep in mind, and it may or may not be a flooring contractor's responsibility. He may not be getting paid to do that, but uh, you need to identify that, and you need to bring that to the attention of, of who is responsible, if it's a GC or end user. That is one thing that will kill floating systems, and I mean any floating system in the marketplace. So in addition to that, um, starting the installation one of the things that I've seen over the years is installers will go out, they'll start the installation, and then they try to put profiles in after the fact. And that doesn't quite work too well. It's, it's doable, but I do like to recommend that uh, the installer, when they get to the job site, obviously you do your, your pre-site or your, your site checks, make sure the subfloor is flat, you're not having any moisture issues, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, meet with the GC, go through it all, but, but before you actually start your installation, do your layout, and then set your T-molding tracks in place. Secure them, anchor them in place, install your floor, leave your expansion space at the track, and uh, finish, finish the installation. The other thing is expansion space. Um, quite often, people are pressured into fitting tight to different um, different fixtures or what have you. The GC says, we're not trimming it out, you need to fit it tight. Well, that, that can be a problem. Uh, the expansion space needs to be honored. And a lot of people talk about expansion space. You never hear anybody talk about contraction. And that's something that really needs to be taken into consideration. It's not just the expansion space. So if the floor is installed, you leave the proper expansion space, and then the GC comes in and puts, uh, you know, puts a, a trim on the, Put, trims it out and he's got a one millimeter or two millimeter or say a sixteenth or an eighth, eighth of an inch overlap covering the edge of that floor and that floor should should move or contract a little bit it's going to come out or it has the potential of coming out from underneath that molding well that that's a problem so I'll talk a little bit more when we get to the um, the profiles the T moldings and moldings reducers um, we've designed those and that's the next slide coming up I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get there so um, cabinetry, fixtures, retail spaces especially. So if you're into a, a retail store, uh, 
a lot of times the GC wants the flooring installed. They want to set all the fixtures and cabinets and rocking, shelving, everything on top of the floor. We try to avoid that as all, if at all possible. If for whatever reason that anything is being anchored to the floor, there needs to be a 3 8 inch expansion space around whatever fixtures that fixtures that they use, whether it's a screw or a nail or what have you. And if anyone should ever get into that type of situation, you know, call us, let us know. We can help you out. We've been through that a lot of different times over the years, and we have some ways of dealing with those types of situations. But ideally, we want those heavy permanent fixtures put in place and not put on top of the floor, just like any other floating system. Next slide, please. Now, these are the transition profiles that we've designed um, recently. You know, we have the four different profiles, the end cap reducer, T-molding, and the stair nosing. And as Paul mentioned earlier, they're all, they've been designed for commercial applications. These are not plastic or wood or what have you. These are actually made out of aluminum. They're an extrusion, extruded aluminum with the decor foil bonded to them. So we, they're available to match all SKUs, all patterns, so they look fantastic. Um, but what we've done here is we've made sure that we were able to design these as thin as possible to minimize any type of trip hazard. So they're very thin. I think that the overall thickness is two millimeters at the at the thickest point. Don't quote me on that. I don't have my information in front of me. And it tapers down to a nice easy, nice transition to uh, to prevent any tripping hazards. The the end cap is a is a very universal um, profile. And again, these are designed for a SPECTA 10 in particular. But before I forget, I want to mention they will work with another one of our products. We have a product, a Metrofloor product called Engage Genesis, which is a little bit thinner. A SPECTA, being, a SPECTA 10 being 10 millimeters thick, the SPECTA, or Engage Genesis being 8 or 8.5 millimeters yeah. in, in thickness. So these actually, there's a little bit of adjustment uh, the track into the, uh, uh, the profile into the track. So we'll work with both of those. You know, someone should specify and then use the Engage um, product and engage Genesis in a commercial environment, these could also be used. They may not match color or design exactly, but a lot of them do cross over quite, quite well. So with that being said, the end cap, that is designed to be used against any vertical surface. Uh, if you have a, a floor to ceiling glass, floor to ceiling glass, a lot of times they're trimmed out with an aluminum metal at the bottom, and sometimes it's difficult to get uh, moldings to attach to the aluminum. They want to sweat, heat, cold, what have you, to get them to bond. They don't hold very well. This track can be installed and floor installed and then the end cap put in place there. It's a really nice transition to those types of uh, scenarios. It can go up any kind of a, against any kind of vertical surface, cabinetry, nice fixtures, what have you. Uh, but the other thing that uh, is really nice about having this cap like this is you can use it up against ceramic tiles quite often. I believe that that total thickness um, when installed from the stub substrate to the top is going to be right at about 12 millimeters, give or take. Um, and I use metric. I'm sorry. I'm just so used to using metric for a lot of years. Um, so any kind of a ceramic tile or stone, uh, that's as long as it's not thicker than that with the uh, with the uh, the mortar bed can be used and adjusted to meet up flush with that surface. Uh, any type of a commercial um, cut pile carpet can generally be used without floating it off away from there. So it's quite a universal uh, scenario. You can use it against hardwood occasionally, what have you. The reducer is just exactly what, what that says, reduces, reduces down from the a SPECTA 10 product down to the substrate level can probably be used. There's enough, there's enough adjustment there that you could use it if you're meeting up to a level loop glue down carpet. Shouldn't be an issue there whatsoever, but typically that's just down to zero or you know, thin sheet vinyl or uh, thin level loop carpets. The T molding. I think everybody knows what a T-molding is. It's utilized in open spaces where you have over 100 foot by 100 foot or in doorways. 
Uh, T molding can also be used to transition to other flooring surfaces, hard flooring surfaces, where you have the same height level as the expected 10. The base tracks, they're aluminum as well. They're not plastic. They are aluminum. They come pre-drilled. They come with the screws and the plastic anchors, and they should be drilled and plugged. We don't recommend just gluing the metal track down in a without mechanically fastening them in a commercial environment um, just don't seem that they typically don't hold up very well anything you try to just glue down in a commercial environment without mechanically fastening them and you'll notice the stair nosing um, the track for the stair nosing we added that leg to the left that you see there just to provide more stability so that uh, if when you step on the edge of the stair nosing that leg, we have more of an anchoring surface. So it's pre-drilled uh, across that leg, and there's some holes drilled in the base track, just, just like the base track uh, above it. So we get kind of a zigzag um, uh, anchoring uh, surface there to give us a really good secure uh, mounting of that track to the substrate. So with that being said, I think that that's all I have at the moment here, and uh, I think we're, Paul, I think you wanted to ask a question. What? Well, well, there's some frequently asked questions anytime, oh, okay. anytime we start talking about uh, commercial installation of floating uh, icicle floors or rigid core, what, or what have you, and uh, also, you know, there may be a lot of questions from the audience as well, but uh, I'd just like to ask, you know, about, uh, about segments, uh, uh, and I'm looking at some installations that we have around the country. We put them in education and, you know, public student housing, uh, hospitality we talked about earlier. Um, right or wrong, we, we put them in assisted living, and we be, even have some retail chain stores that are very interested in it. What is, what is your feel about putting uh, a Spectre 10 in, in retail stores? I think there's a big opportunity in retail stores. I've, I've been down that road over the years, and we had a huge success. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the, the company, the manufacturer, sold their business, and they dropped that product line. But we had to cut our teeth a little bit. It was a little bit of a, um, it was a, little bit of a challenge in the beginning working with the GCs because it was a new system. They didn't understand what floating floors were all about. But, heck, floating floors have been around the U.S. now for since, well, well, 93 when Perstore launched here, but there were actually, there were wood floating systems prior to that. I, can, I remember in the late 80s, uh, I was bringing some products in from Europe, but then I think Harris Tarquette and Bowen launched their floating hardwood systems. They were primarily residential. People were trying to use them commercial, but they've been around a long time. It's not something new today, and I think that there's a huge opportunity in certain applications as long as you have the right environments and the right people working with it. Sure, and, and that's good to know because many retailers where they don't want to have the budget for expensive subfloor prep want to opt out for the Spectre 10. And there's some high household names that we're working with now that are in that category, and they're looking strongly at the Spectre 10, and we have put in installations. But what about healthcare? Healthcare is a, probably one of the biggest growing segments in all of LVT, and what are the caveats here? Well, obviously, it's not going to go into like I said earlier, into surgery rooms, things of that nature, where mm -hmm. we have all this infectious control to, to rightfully so. Uh, you know, they're going to stick with, uh, you know, heat welded products sure. and, and, sure. and the product won't go in those as areas. As mandated, right. As, yeah, absolutely as mandated. But yeah, mm -hmm. gift shops and, and little restaurants and things of that nature, there may be offices, um, you know, throughout the facility, there's certainly some, some opportunity there. And What's really interesting is is the I think the, the key advantage is is getting into areas that you can't shut down. Mm -hmm. You can get the floor in, get it out. You don't have to do a lot of floor prep typically. Um, you don't have to wait for uh, self levelers to dry. I mean, if you got that big of a concern, maybe it's not the right. Sure, it, it's, it's going to be an issue for any storage, sure. whatever. Sure. If it's a dry back or a floating floor, but where speed is of the essence dust, things of that nature. You're not bringing in power tools. For the most part, you can you can score and break the product. You know, if you're cutting around jams or what have you, you may need to use a jigsaw or, or something along that line, sure. but you're not creating a lot of dust sure. And, sure. And, and noise. 
Understood. And just commercial real quick, uh, obviously the product, the way it's built, it, built being a Sherman tank, 10.0 millimeters, it's a higher initial material cost than traditional glue-down products. But there is tremendous savings in less dwell time, uh, sub pour prep, you really don't have per se relative obviously to uh, glue-down products. So it may be much cheaper uh, to put in an Aspecta 10 product than even a traditional you know, Aspecta 5 product or, or, or other competitive products. And maybe a lot of people don't realize that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if in those areas where they shouldn't be installed or mm -hmm. somebody is hesitant, we have we have dryback products. <laughs> there you go. We, we have a great 22 mil, 28 face, mil. Right? So you know we have a good offering, good product offering, yeah, and there's a solution for everyone. Yeah. Well, that's kind of all I have. What what else do or do, or do we have questions uh, from the audience? Actually, uh, gentlemen, you have a couple questions that have come in, and I invite all of our attendees to send more questions in. Um, in the time that we um, have left, we will be glad to um, get to those. Our first question uh, for you, Paul and David, is do you have a stair nosing that angles back when the riser is at an angle, not at a 90-degree angle? No, we don't. And, that's, and the reason for that is commercial applications, and I understand the question, it was a great question, uh, by the way, uh, a lot of your commercial applications, we have the concrete or pan steps, they do come back on an angle, and uh, we didn't want to invest in in de developing a lot of different profiles, we want to try to keep it as, as minimal as possible, and we just don't think that it's an appropriate product to put on steps in those type, in commercial environments. So therefore, we did not we did not develop a profile. We just went to the 90 degree profile uh, in the situation where you may have just a, a basic step down scenario. If the need should arise in the future, we always have that opportunity to uh, to add one to the range. We're certainly open to it. Okay, thank you. Uh, our next question: Can you explain the T molding at 100 foot? Uh, I'm not sure what you what the question. Can we explain the T molding at 100 feet? The I'll, I'll, I'll attempt it here. I think I understand the question. You can install the flooring 100 feet either direction. Anything above that, for example, if you have a retail store, and let's just you know, hypothetically say that it's a single bay, which are typically ballpark maybe 30 foot wide by 120 foot in length. If you're doing the entire store front to back. That 30 foot width, you don't need to put a T molding and split it up widthwise, but in the length, uh, 100 feet is the, the longest length you can go, and then you have to install a T molding to break up that floor into two pieces. And it has to do with, with expansion contraction of the, of the material. Typically, uh, let's just say laminate floors or even floating LVT floors, the standard has been for many, 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 many years, 40 feet by 40 feet is the maximum space. Uh, because of the fact that this product is not wood-based, it's not uh, hygroscopic, it doesn't move because of moisture, humidity, what have you, it's more thermodynamic. And we've done a tremendous amount of research and testing. We've got huge climate chambers at our factories, and we have, uh, based upon you know, our experience, we have, um, you know, we are allowing the floor to be installed up to 100 foot lengths either direction before you have to put a T-mold lean into it. The one thing that I can't get into and won't get into is how much does it expand per lineal foot, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, people have tried that over the years to, to custom design the expansion spaces uh, on a per project basis. And we're just, it's just too complicated to, <laughs> to get into that. So I hope that answers the question. <laughs> Oh, she says, thank you. I thought it was always 40 by 40 with the floating floors, and yes, you answered her question. Fantastic. Well, thank you for the question. Yeah, and that's over. We've had a lot of experience in putting in 100 by 100s without any difficulty thus far. Knock wood real, real loud here, but uh, that was done for, from, from experience, so we feel like that's a good number. Okay, perfect. All right, uh, gentlemen, while we're waiting to see if any other questions come in from your audience, uh, is there anything else you'd like to add? 
Well, maybe just talk about uh, you know contact here. Uh, if uh, anybody needs to get a hold of us, we would love to hear from all of you, love to work with each and every one of you. You can see our contact information here at the, at the bottom. Uh, my email address on here, paul at metrofullcorp.com, and then D. Altman at metrofullcorp.com. And uh, we'd like to, you know, be maybe your commercial source, uh, especially, well, Blue Down included, but especially when it comes to floating floors because we all know this is like going to the moon in terms of commercial, and there are a lot of do's and don'ts here. Well, there seems to be a rebirth here, you know, and, and, and I don't think there have been any floating systems that have been real successful over the years, other than one in particular uh, many years ago. But before that thing really took off, uh, the company slipped their business, sold the business, and, and they killed the product line, which was, was a real shame. But uh, this particular product here, it's not a residential product that we're trying to, you know, wedge into a commercial environment. It's designed, engineered for commercial applications. And if it's specified for the right application, we have the right people install the product, it's a good opportunity. So for anyone that's looking to maybe expand their business or looking at other opportunities, uh, I, I think it's, a, it's something that really they should really take a look at because uh, I think you're going to see it, it really grow. Um, we're, I can't tell you, or Paul could actually tell you better than I can since he handles sales, but we see a, a huge uptick you know, in our sales, uh, especially in certain market segments, hospitality, which is hot right now. Yeah. And, and It's growing faster and, than anything. And others. It's, it's growing it's, faster than anything. I'm just, looking at, I'm just looking at a number of, of segments that we're, we're, we're putting it in. Um, we're, we're in, uh, again, we're in uh, education, uh, public areas, student housing, uh, hospitality is on fire. We can't keep up with the demand. Uh, even household name uh, retailers, chain, which here to four a couple of years ago, I almost would have laughed at you if you said they would even consider this, but they are doing it. And in healthcare, in the areas that Dave has identified where it's not safe to put put it in, but every one of those areas, we even got uh, fitness centers, and I kind of was aghast when I found out we put it in a. You know, it's like uh, it's an LA fitness store where they're dropping these heavy dumbbells on there, and somehow it's still holding up and, and doing doing well. Not, not that we really recommended that particular <laughs> application. Yeah. It somehow Amen. slipped, and, and but we'll monitor that one and see what happens. Careful, and we we actually have a test now in a, one of these hot yoga fitness centers where the temperatures are kind of crazy high, and the key word there is test. So we're going to see how that works because it obviously. That goes beyond the 85 degrees that we talked about. But I think the whole uh, comment is there are more places commercially that Isocore and Aspecta 10 can go than it can't go. I would agree. All right. Thank you. Uh, just a comment that came in while you both were speaking. Um, the comment was I would always lean away from floating floors uh, in big areas due to the 40 by 40. Good to know that this can go farther. Great. Yeah, that's very important. Very important. Yep, and experience validates that's the truth. So good. All right, perfect. Okay, everyone, we are at the top of the hour. We would like to thank Metro Floor for sponsoring today's webinar, and especially thank both uh, you, Paul, and David, for presenting it. We appreciate your time this morning. If you well, would like you. more information, uh, thank you. If you'd like more information about Aspecta by Metro Floor, you can visit their website, um, expectaflooring.com, or contact either Paul um, or David directly. And again, as they said, their contact information is contained within these pre presentation slides. Uh, we'll send you a copy of those. Um, after the um, recording is available, we'll send you the recording link and a copy of the presentation slides and all of those wonderful brochures that they have provided for you. Um, and another reminder, too, this recording will be available on the um, FCICA website for the entire month, and it will be housed on our YouTube channel where you can access it at any time. And a reminder to our certified installation managers out there, this and all FCICA webinars can be credited toward your continuing education credits for your SIM renewal. Uh, give us a call at 248-661-5015 if you have any questions, or my email, kelly at fcisa.com. And also contact me if you're interested in sponsoring one of these promotional uh, webinars. We would love to work with you. And again, thank you, Metro Floor, and uh, thanks for everyone for joining us, and have a great day. Thanks.